Hello friends, this is Gus from 3dplearner.com and in this video I'm going to highlight the most important aspects of this post I did on how to map rigs onto other rigs. So what is this rig to rig mapping and why would you like to do that? So there are some uh, papers that have dealt with this before and show interesting examples. Uh, the first one I can point to is this one by Disney Research where they map a humanoid to non-humanoid rig and you can clearly see there is correlation between these two poses but you can also probably see how the parameters to control both rigs uh, would be numerically very different so what they do is use a machine learning model in that case it wasn't even a, a neural network but it was a, some other type of nonlinear regression that would correlate these two different data sets and then um, once that is correlated you can get new motions and, and apply that mapping to. And uh, there is uh, this work by Holden, which is pretty much similar. Uh, there are also works showing how you can control a rig, a full rig with just a subset of its controllers, which would be useful, for example, in a VR setting, like what is exemplified right here. And also there are some examples showing how you can uh, not only correlate, correlate two different rigs, but you can have one of those rigs to to have like a really noisy data set and then you can use this type of approach to clean the, the motion to make it more uh, stable. So there are uh, a bunch of different applications. I hope you can see how useful this might be uh, in different contexts. And what I'm going to do right here is I'm going to use that IK rig that I have previously implemented and which I have showed in another video, which I'll link to in the description. And I'll correlate a very uh, minimal set of, of inputs from that rig to the full uh, blown IK rig. So the IK rig is like a bunch of uh, positions uh both uh of the root and the effectors of each of the character's limbs plus the direction of each of the, li the limbs uh and plus the orientation of each of the effectors and that's going to be my output and my input is going to be only uh, the the effector the effector position so you can see it's um like one third of the of the data okay uh, I guess it's even less than that. So what I did was to uh, load the CMU data set, uh, the FBX conversion that I have provided, and I run this script. Um, and in this script, basically what I do is I go through all the FBXs in the CMU data set and I connect them, I wire them to an IK rig. And you can see how this is done. If you look at this function, uh, I have a uh, map the names of the, 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 the names in the IK rig and the names in the CMU skeleton. And then I use that to wire, doing to all the wiring. And also I normalize the, the character's proportions by uh, calculating the the heat the height of the hips and the length of each of the limbs okay so this this is what i have done in a nutshell so this is what uh, this will convert all the fb axis to uh fk fb axis to ik rigs in csv format so this is the same animation but in csv uh, which is much easier to to read in a machine learning package okay so the IK rig has 81 parameters and here you can see the 81 parameters spread out right here and then you have the frames right here okay and then you have all the CMU data set right here all the 2000 and something motions then I will load that I'll consolidate that using this little uh, Jupyter notebook it will just read through all the CSVs and store them in one convenient variable which will then be saved in the, the numpy format and then i'll read that into my uh, the notebook where i actually do the model definition and training so uh, in the model definition i split the data into input data and output data 
I throw away the global position and orientation as those values really don't describe the pose. I, I mean, I can do the same pose anywhere in space. The, the, the place where I am, it, it doesn't correlate to the pose at all. So I throw away those, those values. So you can see I start here from the third input onwards. And in the input, I want to have only that subset that I talked about right here. So I guess this is like uh, 21 or 24 uh, inputs, uh, which account for the hips position and then the uh, position of all the other factors in the human body. And those correlate to the uh, 78 parameters in the output, which are the 81 minus the three parameters that account for the global position and orientation. So then I uh, define a very simple uh, neural network, uh, which is it's just like a fully connected neural network with three layers, I mean, uh, three hidden layers. And they're like uh, 512 of size and they have really good activations, not really much going on there. Very simple model. Most of the, the models, the examples I have show you, showed you, they have a very simple topology. Uh, except that one uh, that does the noising has a, a like a ResNet topology, but still fully connected. And then I train it for like 200, oh, 300 uh, epochs. And as epochs go on, you get better and better results. And I export that as an Onyx uh, file format as I have done previously and as I have explained in other tutorials. So uh, from that, we have a model that is able to get this data, very partial data, and convert it to this full-blown uh, IK rig. So let's see how that works in Maya. Uh, we have created a plugin to read the model, which is called 3DL uh, F2 full body, which is what I call the model, effectors to full body. Uh, you can see the code right here. Uh, it's your basic uh, DG node, uh, Maya DG node, which I have explained in other tutorials. I, we create a, a class to cache the model and we get the get an array of uh, scalars as input get uh, subtract the only the effector ids and then use the model to predict what would be the pose based on the effector ids and then output that and set the result window clean and here we have the result um, just to check what we're doing right here we have the a CSV to scalar array node, which we uh, we use to uh, read the CSV files. Uh, so we give the CSV file right here, and then we give it a frame so we could uh, load any other motion from the CMU data set by changing the, oh, uh, I only have one in this, in this folder. So if I need another one, I would need to go right here. So we can load any of those CSV files, okay, from the CMU dataset. And if we change the number right here, we will load another one. Okay, so it's just streaming the data from the CSV files we generated. And then it um, <clears throat> passes that through the our model right here. So our model, we can in uh, the node for our model, we can see the raw data, which is what we're seeing right here. We can see the data only of the inputs. Uh, that means only the effectors. I'll just hide this uh, skeletons uh, just so it's clearer to see. So this is what the, the model actually sees as inputs. It only sees the position of the effectors. Okay, and then it has to infer all that other information to make this look as close as possible to the raw data. So I'll bring the skeleton back. And if we now see the output of the model, this is what it outputs. So it's pretty impressive. It's very close to the original data. Uh, of course, you can see some problems. Our model doesn't have any time coherence. Uh, constraints 
so you're gonna see some popping but the direction of the the joint the limbs is mostly correct the orientation of the effectors is mostly correct and it, overall it's even though it doesn't have any time coherence features it is quite stable so here let me show you the difference this is the the output of the model this is the raw data so there is clearly some difference but it's not that much okay and <clears throat> As I told you, you know, mostly correct. So this is a very uh, simple case. Of course, you could elaborate on this, but it I think it gives you not only the intuition on how to map rigs onto other rigs, which is something that has many applications, but also on how to use a motion capture data set like the same CMU data set, how to pre-process it and how to use that pre-processed data to train the model. So I hope this um uh, this interests you uh, i have made all the code available in this folders right here you can there are some snippets uh, explain the, the most important parts right here and if you want to download you need to uh, subscribe subscribe to this post specifically to download all the resources that i have made available i also assume you you will download the um, the IK rig implementation that is also needed to to get the things uh, working. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed this uh, tutorial highlights right here. And if you like what we're doing, please share our content and tell uh, tell about us to your friends and and coworkers. Uh, thank you very much, and until next time.